Yep, knew it. It's color, it's white. If they had touched it, it would be gray. I approached it while scanning the area around me. Then I felt it through my sleeve. I don't know if that's something that you could have known somehow. If there, I, I'm assuming it wasn't ever explicitly mentioned, but maybe if Arts, this Artsky now touches the Sekime and travels somewhere, and then this sort of timeline gets picked up somewhere else in like one of the earlier chapters, you might be able to guess that that is what happened. But that's, but yeah, <laughs> that's a bit far. Uh, I approached it while scanning the area around me. Then I felt it through my sleeve. Damn, it's super hot just like Carthy said. There's no way they activated it. They had to have been going to the event room, so I opened its door. What if... If the Sikimea gets too... Like, I've... I've thought about this before, and I've mentioned it before a couple of times. That if the Sikimea gets too hot, it activates itself. What if, if it does that? I don't know if that's true, by the way. I, it, it was a theory I had at some points. What if, if that is true, it doesn't lose its power when it does that? That it only loses its power when it's purposely activated by someone touching it? That's a theory. They had to have been going to the event room, so I opened its door. When I did, I hit something on the other side. Okay, now, that's actually a bit more of a difficult question. <laughs> um, what would you have hit? I like the idea of it just being another Sekimea. Like, purely based on what he could have hit. What could he have hit? It's in the event room. I don't think there was ever a dead body in the event room. So it's not that. The suitcase was never in the event room. I don't think he would have hit... Like, I'm going through my previous answers here. I don't think he would have hit a key. Would he? No. <laughs> it was a Atsuki. Uh, it could be a person. But the thing is... Well, now it, it depends. Usually for answers like this that just allow you to type something in, either they act uh, accept a bunch of different options, not in terms of like, um, if it's like not clear. Like when, it, when it's a person, for example, like I could write, uh, it was a person, it was a body, it was a human, I don't know. Either they accept like a lot of different things for that, or they just, the answers are very clearly defined. So like, as it was earlier, it was a Sekimea. What else are you gonna? What else are you gonna write? It was a hot white stone. Uh, no, uh, it was a Sekimea. So I, I think it probably isn't a body or a human or whatever, because it's just not clear enough. So I think it's gonna be a Sekimea again. It said he hit something. Is there anything else it could be? What else would he? What else would you hit? Because there, there aren't actually that many objects in this whole tower. Like, thinking about it now, a knife, maybe? Maybe that, that was that one travel? But I think she, like, I think a knife did disappear once, but that's, that's a big stretch. I don't know, though. Let me... Well, the thing is, going back to this scene doesn't help me, because uh, they travel to past or future, whatever there, so they're not there anymore, whatever is now in that event room. Mm. Yeah, okay, that, that was the elevator buttons stuff after that immediately okay I think I'm gonna go with it I don't know like 
I was very confident with the last one. This one is a guess. I don't know the right answer. I did guess it though. <laughs> it was another second air. However, it was powered off. Oh, what? What happened? I touched this one instead? Hang on. Is this the one I found in the cabinet? If it's not working now, that means it was previously working. The empty cabinet was uncovered. I went to room A1. Inside the same cabinet from before, a third Sekimei arrested. The hell? There are three of them? There are? Okay. Huh. I felt it through my sleeve as well. As I'd expected, it was cold. So this one doesn't work. Browning, I went back to the event room. Two functional Sekimei were on the floor, close to each other. Hmm. A vague idea had formed in my head during the hours I've been waiting. Was I... right? Where was everyone? If they if they had travelled through time, where were they? Oh, there's... One of the Sekimei travels to the past, one travels to the future. What if one alternates timelines? So we've kind of had this thing about two timelines. I don't know if that's actually just like a massive... Massive ploy. I don't know if that's the right word. Like a massive red herring. Where there actually aren't two timelines and somehow all makes sense that it's just one timeline. That would be very, very interesting to uncover that uh, towards the ending and just kind of try to unravel that. Um, but if there are, what if one Sekimeya transports you between them? That would, I think, kind of make sense. Because we've had two different functionalities for the two different Sekimeyas. So it kind of makes sense to me that if we find a third one, that would have a different functionality as well. Unless it is sort of a copy of one of the other two that comes from a different timeline, maybe. But I feel like that doesn't really make sense with what we've seen or read so far. Wait, I have to see if I can find them. This is very important. Focused on my thoughts, I walked through the crystal floor. Atsuki suspected that perhaps... This is what I think... This, like, this is what I was suspecting right now, that they travel to a different timeline. So I'm gonna go with that. I'm not even gonna think about it too much anymore. Yep. Is nobody here? What about Sai? Does he disappear with everyone else? I had to look above too. So I grabbed both functional Sekimea and went up the stairs. I reached the attic and saw that the door was open. However, the key wasn't in the keyhole. Recent footprints were in the living room, but I couldn't hear anyone moving around. I looked in the kitchen, the bathroom, the storeroom, both bedrooms. They were all empty. I don't think the people who are in hallway B are currently here. I sat on the sofa. The Sekimea I'd seen weren't there anymore, likely because they were the same ones I was holding. This world, it's clearly not the one I lived through. Many things are happening differently. I thought that maybe the past had been changed at some point. This would have led into the many deviations I've noticed. But there's something about this world that I recognize. And if I'm really recognizing something from this world, there's no way it was created after the first time I visited it. What Askew recognized from this world was... One second. Let me read through that again. Mm hmm. There's something about this world that I recognize. And if I'm really recognizing something from this world, there's no way it was created after the first time I visited it. Hmm. Now, Mia's existence is a weird one. 
Because... What Atsuki recognized from this world... How would that make any sense in that context? I don't really get that. The storeroom's handle, that's something that could be recognized. The empty tower. I don't really know what this question is getting at, really. Hmm. The empty tower. Was Atsuki in a situation with an empty tower at some stage? Possibly. I don't really know, to be honest. The storm handle is like the only thing I can think of. Yeah, I'll go, I'll go with that. No. Not the storm handle. He never saw it before his appearance in this world. What I recognized from that world was Mia's existence. What do you mean? That's like, I figured it was possible that that was the answer, but I don't understand it yet. So guide me through it, game. Even though I haven't been able to see her, what I heard was her voice. I can't doubt that. When that happened, everyone was there. In other words, Mia's existence wasn't something anyone found strange. Not even my past self. Okay. But... I still don't get it. A while ago, Erna claimed to have seen Mia, but her reaction was appropriate. She said she didn't think Mia had been in the tower before. However, the same thing didn't occur shortly after that. Of course I'm assuming Mia's in on it as well. Not gonna keep trying to clear your name? I suppose it'd be futile with how obvious it is that this is your doing. Okay, I'll ask, how do you know about Mia? What? She's been here. That's it, ignore him from now on. He can't get out of the corner he's backed himself into. Okay, is this chapter one? Uh, hello? Please? Uh, okay, let me go from the other side. Okay, yeah, that was the repeating of that scene. Uh, okay, this is still way after. Okay, this is where we're at. Um... Okay, okay, okay. Okay, still not quite there. Okay, I think this is too much to read through all again right now. But... There, I think there was a pretty long scene here. Okay, wait, why did Sai leave? Okay. So Erna touched the gemster, the Sikimea there. And Sai disappeared. But we, so, assuming that Oh god, this is confusing. Okay, but either way, no matter who out of those really disappeared there, if it was Eren, Oshiro, and Atsuki who disappeared, or if it was Sai who disappeared. Either way, the group of Eren, Atsuki, and Shiria met up with the group of Sai, Kate, and Akaro, who um, traveled from the other world. And we're like, Shiria, the fuck is that? Uh, mm -hmm. 
Okay. Uh huh. Me as in as well. Hmm. Sai and Akro acted as if Mia's existence was normal. And that's not all. After that point, I never saw Akro again. And when he appeared with different clothes after Nine, he said he hadn't been present at the last time I'd seen him. In addition, Sai's attitude at that time was different from how he behaved afterward. So when did that happen? When did Mia's existence become normal for the world? When Erina touched the Sekime in the event room. Well, t uh, I guess so. Because that's kind of the, the scene I just looked through. That was what happened. Frankly, I don't know what either of those are referring to. <laughs> um, this is the, like, I literally just read through that. So I'm going to assume that's the case. Yeah. Erina, Sai, Shira, and I were in the event room. At that point, everyone was surprised to hear Erina mention Mia. But when Erina touched the Sekimea, that changed. Both Sai and Akru, who hadn't been in a room, found Mia's existence to be an expected thing. Once again, that's not all. There was another major change. Uh, she, well, Shira's existence wasn't a thing anymore. It was Shira's existence. Sai and Akro were shocked when they saw her, and perfectly in line with that, I haven't seen her here. When Erina touched the Sekimea, something major occurred. I'm sure of that. The Sekimea must have had a hidden effect all this time. That effect occurred when Erina touched it. That was definitely the strangest travel of them all. Three major questions arose. Why did Erina, Shira and I not travel, but Sai did? Why did the Sekimea teleport instantly back to its cabinet? Why was the range bigger than it should have been? Now I'm aware of a factor that I didn't consider at the time, which could be the answer to what happened. Um, okay, so that that's... no. That makes no sense. Is he aware of traveling to the future yet? Or is it the second... I mean, you know what? The second Sekimea is kind of kind of the same as traveling to the future because you know the second Sekimea is the Sekimea that travels to the future I don't think was he aware no he wasn't aware that there is a second Sekimea and he's now aware there's a third one but he wasn't aware there's a second Sekimea in the original timeline I believe in chapter one and I don't think he is actually aware of traveling to the future yet so I think that is the only logical answer to that one. The second Sekimea. Before Erina touched the Sekimea when we entered the event room, Shira and I were confused to see the Sekimea in the cabinet. In my case, it was because I'd recently hidden it. Specifically in a locker in the staff room. When I saw it in the cabinet, I thought it must have teleported to its original place, or where the cold temperature was. The reality was... Wait, I was absent-minded again. Uh huh. It was not the same Sekimeo. I don't think it was the same Sekimeo. However, the one I'd hidden in the staff room had been working, and the one in the cabinet which Erin had touched was working as well. So I think that what I believe to be the main key to most of those questions is... Probably this? Hmm... I don't think that really answers anything that's completely irrelevant. I think it has to be this. I mean, this is a maybe, but I think this is this is the obvious one. Uh, wait. So is he saying I was wrong? Maybe he's saying I was wrong. I'm not sure the Sekimera was activated was the reason. 
The answer might be the location of both Sick and Mayo. Okay. Okay. I'm listening. The one in the event room spent 15 minutes outside the cabinet. Meanwhile, as I touched the one in the staff room at around 18.30, it should have gathered power there for almost half an hour. The range of the Sikimea Erin I touched might have looked like this. Mm -hmm. However, the hidden factor that I didn't account for was the Sikimea in the staff room. Oh, okay. So, are you saying that if you touch one Sekimea, both activate to an extent? Or are you saying that it doesn't matter which Sekimea you touch? Um, we'll listen to him further. It was in the rightmost set of lockers, and given the time it had been there, I imagine its range extended halfway through the event room. If this is what was special about that travel, then what happened to us? Sai did travel because he was only within range of Erna Sekimea. However, the rest of us didn't teleport through space or time. Instead, what changed was the world around us. The Sekimea didn't teleport back to the cabinet. That was a mere illusion. Then I quickly went to check the locker and found out the Sekimea had hidden there was gone. It only contributed to the same illusion. I might be mistaken somewhere, but I don't think that was still the same world. However, what happened later? We did reunite with the Psy who traveled in the event room, didn't we? Similarly, Akro and the other Psy weren't found again. It was as if we'd gone as if we'd gone back to our world. I wonder, does that hypothesis solve every mystery surrounding that travel? What about the range? It was bigger than previous 15 minute travels, wasn't it? Two functional Sikimea existed. There, if their ranges overlapped, the Sikimea's effect wouldn't just be time travel. I think that could be right. It's not an idea that can only be applied in that instance. Where is everyone? The Sikimea was just activated when both of them were close to each other on the crystal floor, and it doesn't seem like the others are still in this tower. How did I get to this world? Could it really be the same one we briefly visited? This morning, Shiri and I witnessed the Sekimea teleport, but that would just be an illusion. The Sekimea isn't teleporting, it only appears that way because the entire world is changing. When it happened, we'd found the Sekimea inside a cabinet in room B4. It's very possible the other one had been hidden nearby. That's why immediately after its disappearance, Naomi was running to the attic with both Sekimea. We chased her up, but in the attic staircase, Shiri had disappeared. When I looked at the living room, both Sekimea were next to each other, and one of them was grey. That must be why neither Naomi nor Shiri are here. Lastly though, this would answer the question of how Naomi's corpse appeared two times. If Naomi touched the Sekimea and the world around her changed, she would have appeared in the attic. Her keys had been left behind so she would have had no way to leave. That's what happened. That's what we saw on the floor of the living room. That's why we found Naomi dead twice. The Nomi that Shiria disappeared with was one of the two bodies that we found dead. Does that mean that Shiria was there since the beginning? The Nomi that Shiria disappeared with was one of the two bodies that we found dead. That is... <laughs> Alright. Now... If we're being reasonable... It would have to be correct because we only kind of and i say no with a lot of doubt about it um but as far as we know there's only two worlds i'm gonna call them from now because i think that's what artsky has been doing as well there's only two worlds so there cannot be more than two naomi's so if we found two dead naomi's that must mean that the Naomi that Shiria disappeared with has to be one of the two dead bodies. I don't know how it could be incorrect, so I'm not gonna think about it more. Damn it. <laughs> okay.
Fair. Explain. Unfortunately, it is not correct. While it's understandable for Atsuki to have made that mistake, I thought perhaps you had realized the flaw. Bit sassy there, game, huh? Um, pure, you know what? If there hadn't been that scene where Atsuki and Shirio were talking from Shirio's POV, and Atsuki told her about traveling to the future, I think it was that, when the game asks you, is what Atsuki is saying the truth? And I clicked no, and the game was like, nope, it was true. If that scene hadn't happened, I would have clicked incorrect here. Absolutely. Just out of a kind of a mind gaming the game kind of way. But that kind of made me think, okay, maybe, but okay. I realized the flaw. What is the flaw? I'm pretty sure. Now, the only way I can see this being untrue is that if there were never two dead Naomi's to begin with, and if somehow between them traveling or like seeing both dead Naomi's, they'd all the time travel between worlds? It's, it sounds very unrealistic. So, is the game just not even going to explain it to me? Okay. What if I say... What if I say incorrect? <laughs> it, it literally doesn't even change much. I figured you would have realized the flaw. Yes, okay, sure. So if I activate the Sikki Mail right now, will I go back to the other world? When Shirio disappeared, she wasn't in the living room yet, meaning that she didn't leave any footprints. I wondered earlier how I'd be here for 12 hours without being found, when the searches we executed would have found me. Of course, in this world, this doesn't apply. It appears everyone is gone. Where are they, though? Am I really correct in what I'm thinking? What if there's three worlds? What if there is three worlds? And this world has just been left empty. So there are three versions of everyone. That does actually kind of make sense. Now that I think about it. Hmm. Everyone who was in hallway B is no longer in this world. If that is the case, are they in a world I came from? Is that possible? It might be, but it doesn't feel right. After all, if this is the world where I was when Erina touched the Sikimea, Sai and Akro must eventually come back. It was very confusing. True. Especially because I couldn't prove anything. However, the fundamental basis that I was working with seemed correct. What exactly were the body double mysteries? I can't understand Shiryu's case at all, and I'm not sure about Sai's. Isla's, though. Could her friend have been the Isla from this world? From this world? I don't know what the hell to think. And that's mostly due to the most blatant example, the second Akaro. The Akaro who had different memories and disappeared from the bedroom. Did he come from a different world in the way that I'm thinking? If so, he couldn't have been the Akaro from this world because he didn't know who Kate was. But he did know Shiria. Now... What have you been thinking all this time? Do you have your own answers? First off, what is the explanation behind that Akaro? Okay. Right. Hmm. I think... From everything we've seen so far, changing the past has not been a thing. Akro lied. I don't believe so. His memories were erased. That's an interesting one because we haven't had that under consideration at all. He was from another world. If we're going back to there being three worlds, which would explain how two dead Naomi's could still mean that there's another Naomi who's somewhere else, it's perfectly 
possible that Akro was from that world. I'm going with that. Correct. A world beyond Atsuki's knowledge. So where did that Akro come from? Could he have come from a world without Kate? If that's it though, this is too fucking confusing. Yep. <laughs> could changing worlds bring me to any kind of world? There could be infinite worlds, and the Sikimea could act as random bridges between them. Now, tell him. Although he can't hear you, tell him why he's wrong. There have to be three, right? There have to be. Do there have to be? This is just... I mean, honestly, if there's less than three, the Naomi situation doesn't make sense. If there's more than three, we just have no real reasoning for that. I th there, there have to be three, surely. Yes, there we go. Only three different worlds exist. How did you know that, though? How could you be sure... Well, sure is a strong word here in this context. ...of such a powerful assertion. Because the free... Okay, this is an interesting sentence. Because the free worlds... How would you even complete that sentence? With... I'm assuming these are all one-word answers. Because the free worlds... Hmm... That doesn't really... There's one Sekime in each world? Maybe? Kind of? Or one... sort of one power for... Yeah. But if, if the answer was Sekime as the grammar doesn't make sense in that sentence. Because the free worlds... Sekime as the... It's not right. Because the free worlds... Hmm. I can't think of a word that would complete that sentence logically. It would have to be a longer sentence, and I don't think it would be the answer. Honestly, I, I just can't think of anything. I might type in something like Sekimeas, but it's just... Why... why exactly are there free worlds? Why am I thinking that? Purely because... The game just told me, like... That, that was... that's the only reasonable explanation why two Naomi's being... Dead and that... yeah, I'd, I'd said that before. And that other Akaro... that... There could, in theory... Why can't there be a fourth one? Because we haven't had any evidence on it. There has been nothing to suggest that there would be. But do we have any reason to know that there isn't? It matches the three Sekimeas and the three different powers, yes. But that's not really a good reason. And as far as we could tell... Kind of all three Sekimeas appear at all times in all worlds. So it's not really... I mean, we don't know that for certain. But unless they they also just happen to travel between worlds, which I don't think they do. Hmm. I, honestly, I can't think of anything. So I'm typing in Sekimeas. I don't know what the answer is. Why is it proven that there are not infinite worlds? Why can't a fourth one exist? It is because the free worlds loop. That is the essential core of the universe you've witnessed. The free worlds loop. What does that mean? Do they? Okay. Explain. Buddha Sekimea. The link between three worlds looped. The three sides of the mountain spun around, leading to a single peak. But that doesn't answer all the questions, does it? 
doesn't answer any question really. I don't understand that 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 paragraph. I don't understand it in the slightest. What the hell does that mean? Okay. <laughs> Why only three worlds? Asuki correctly figured out the Sikimea's core secret. In each world, two Sikimea existed. When one was activated, the active range sent anyone encompassed in it through time. However, if both ranges overlapped, whoever found themselves present within both were not transported through time and space, but through worlds. Okay, yeah, that's that makes sense. That's kind of what we figured out with that. I mean, I say we figured out. The game explained it to us, and I was like, okay, I kind of get it. Um, okay, but so there's two Sikimea in each world. Okay, okay, okay. So the two Sikimea that are in each world are always... One that goes to the future, one that goes to the past. There is no Sikimea that trans transports you through worlds on its own. The you get transported through worlds solely if both the Sikimea that teleport you or transport you to the past and the one that transports you to the future both encompass you within their range. Okay. This effect is called the world switch although the full extent of the name might not make a lot of sense to you yet. Like everything about the Sikimea, the World Switch hid many secrets of its own. Of course you might have figured some of them out with the tools you were given. There is one world in which only Atsuki is found alive in a tower. He is suspected of having been behind multiple crimes, but his life is suddenly cut short as he looks through a window. That world will be called A. Uh, I I remember the world where only Atsuki is found. What do you mean his life is suddenly cut short as he looks through a window? I don't remember that part. Let me actually go right back to the end here. Okay, that's not actually the end. That's after the end. Um... Okay, wait. Uh... Okay, um, where did that actually end? Wait, let me go for this part here. Twenty-one ten. I go to the lobby and fall to my knees in defeat. Mhm. Mm so I don't think that really explained an end at all. Where did chapter two end? All right, that was a thing, wasn't it? The sound wakes up Naomi, who instantly accuses one of us of being a murderer and another as the culprit behind the attack. I completely forgot that that happened. Huh. Nobody's in the lobby. Okay. So this is the world where only Shidia comes out and everyone else is dead okay what was at the end there uh, okay that was that part no that was the world where everyone died Okay, no, that was the world where every... Okay, so chapter 2 was the world where only Shirio is found. Chapter 3 was the one where only Atsuki's unconscious body is found. Many weeks after December 15th, almost a third of Japan's population disappears forever. Was that... Did you look out of the window then? Uh, 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 uh... uh. Okay.
Okay, yeah, that, that was the sentence. Many weeks had passed since December 15th. Lonely, Artsky looked at the sky through the glass of a window. He could not yet believe what his life had become, and imagining the worst years ahead of him, he could only cry. The sky he saw, he wasn't happy he could still see it. He wanted it to disappear, and it did. Through the glass of a window, the cloudy sky could be seen. However, no one was there to see it. Yep. Okay, so that was that world. Okay. That world will be called A. Okay. Yep. Okay. I, I remember the world. I don't remember any of the context of what happened in that world specifically, but I remember the world. If that world is A, then a world in which everyone survived and left the tower. What do you mean? These are random variables. You could call either of them B or C. It literally doesn't matter. Why would you... Okay. Game. Game. These are random variables. You could, you could call them X and Z. It doesn't matter. What? Okay. Sure. It's gonna be C, isn't it? Exactly the C. Of course it is. Why wouldn't it be? Sure. Can you... Game, can you explain why it's C? Then B is the world in which the recorder was present. Okay, one logical reasoning is if you always travel through the worlds in order and the letters get assigned by, you know, you travel from A to B, then B to C, then C to A, then A to B, and so on. That still doesn't mean you have to call it B. You could travel from A to Z to C to A to Z to C. It, it doesn't matter. But that would be slightly logical, at least. Then B is the world in which the recorder was present. At 9 p.m., Artsky, Sai, and Erina weren't able to escape. By world switching from world A, people were brought to. If if you're gonna tell me, <laughs> you're gonna tell me you get brought to world C, I'm gonna close the game. Thank you. <laughs> that that would have been okay. Yes. This is the world, the way the world's looped. <laughs> You've seen a few instances of full loops. Mia's group went from their own world C to world A. From world A they went to world B, and then from world B they went back to world C. Shiria, after traveling from January 5th to December 15th, went from world B to world C with Aski. In the attic, she went from world C to world A with Naomi. And finally, she returned alone to world B. In other words, the order is A, B, C, A. Worlds A and C were drastically different, as the worlds followed an intrinsic progression with each other. However, as strange as it might seem, there was only a single degree of separation between C and A. Uh, what do you mean? With which order? With the ABCA order? With some other order? There's gonna be a problem with the order. I don't know what the problem with the order is. Screw it. There is, isn't there? I don't know, you tell me. I'm sure you can find instances that didn't follow that order. All of which had something in common. Okay. I'm sure I could if I went through the whole, like, third three chapters again with that new knowledge, which I'm not gonna do because it would take, like, two hours and it would be confusing. I'd need, like, a massive diagram like you see in those crime shows. We've got, like, pictures hung up and threads connecting all of them, um, which might be fun to do, but I'm not gonna do it right now. What did they have in common? The incident at the tower happened in all three worlds, but the outcome was vastly different. Why? The major difference in world A. Um, world A was the world where Atsuki was the only one found. Oh god. Um, Kate was the Wait. Kate was there. The second- the second Naomi was- yeah. It had to be that. In world... Wait. Kat is... Okay, so that world is world A. So world A is not the world we initially experienced. 
in chapter 1. World A is the world from chapter 2? That makes sense? I'm confused. <laughs> okay, cut his absence. Hate put his plan into action. He put both real Sekime in the suitcase he had prepared and moved to the secret door in the storeroom. He felt the handle, but he quickly realized he had dropped the key in the hallway. While he was searching for it, Naomi found the suitcase and took it. Then, when Kate found the key, he attempted to unlock the secret door. And he did. He was able to leave. But he didn't step out. He saw the Sikimea had been taken before hearing Naomi's movements. His plan had been very close to succeeding, so he panicked. He ran behind her desperately, but Naomi had a safe place, the attic. He chased her up, but he recognized that going all the way was a mistake. He could never enter the final floor. He tripped in the staircase leading to the fourth floor and nervously walked back. Without realizing, he dropped yet another key. Oh god, um, I remember this scene. Oh god. Which key? Was it the security rooms? This was like all the way back. I don't even know how I remember that scene. But there was this scene where I think they went down the stairs and Artsky noticed, I think it was Artsky who noticed, that Kate was looking at something or like seemed to have found something and was kind of suspicious about that. I remember that scene. I do not remember which key it was. The rusty key was for um, the for the, the secret passage, the secret door leading outside. That was what the rusty key was for. Would he have lost that there? Um, rust. But that, that whole scene, didn't that happen in a world where Kate was with the others? So he wasn't absent. Or maybe, huh. maybe after that, he traveled to another world and he was looking for some... Okay, there. Which key would it have been? Security room. The sec I don't think it was the Sikimea cabinet's key. I don't think that makes any sense, really. But I can't, I can't tell. I can't remember. I could probably look it up. But does it specifically mention it was very early on? Um, yeah, I think they went up and then they went down again. Hmm. But I'm not sure I can find it like this. No. I don't think so. What, what would it have said? Stair... 187. Um... Hmm. Wait. Oh, a suitcase. Okay. Mm hmm. I, well, I'm not sure I'll find that. Hmm. 
It doesn't even necessarily have to mean that is in there. Maybe the word stare it was just not anywhere near that scene. I think I'm already too late. I think it was earlier. I, I'm not going to find it. Um, I'm going to go for... Why would, it ma why would it matter if it was the security rooms? It could. What's the last few sentences before that? The security room was locked in one of the worlds. I feel like that's significant. I don't know if it's significant because of this, though. I'm gonna go for it. It might be the rusty key, but I'm gonna go for that. Security rooms. Yep. You remember that Artsky found it there, but that didn't happen in... <laughs> yeah, I remember, for sure. But that didn't happen in World A, did it? That was in World C. You might know who found the key in World A. It was Akaru. Although many things were different, Atsuki only came across it in World C because Kate had been staring at the floor, and he wasn't there in World A. Yeah, so I remember that scene of him staring at the floor. His mind threatening to collapse in on itself, Kate realized his only option was to escape from the building as quickly as possible. He left through the storeroom before the others woke up. Outside, he was fast enough to meet up with everyone else who'd evacuated. He knew the floor two cameras had recorded him, but he was confident he could take care of that at 9pm. Meanwhile, in World C, everything happened similarly. However, when Kate attempted to unlock the storeroom door, he couldn't. Something prevented him from doing so. Like in World A, he heard Naomi's movements and chased her up, dropping the key in the same staircase. So what about World B? What happened to the security key, security room key in that world? Okay. World B. So, I think this is the world where Mia lives. What happened in that? Surely that doesn't have not found yet. Uh, can you, why would you not bring me to first result? Okay. Okay. He literally just says we have no means of opening it. Hmm. Wait, okay. It was Artsky's. He'd been at the back of the group, maintaining his predictable reserved attitude. Found it in a staircase. Okay. Was it? Wait. Hmm. Okay, so no, this was this was the world in which Artsky noticed Kate dropped the key. So this is world C. What's world B then? Is world B the original one? Uh uh huh uh huh. I'm gonna say it, um, I assume he never dropped it. Or I immediately realized he dropped it. I think world B is then the world in which chapter one took place. And I don't think we ever had any problems getting into the security room. Kate had the key. The question is, did he not drop it or did he immediately realize it? Why would he immediately realize he dropped it if he did and not in the other two scenarios? 
I'm gonna say he didn't drop it, but I think this is also possible. Okay, I guessed right. I'm not entirely sure why yet. 